Welcome to Horse Riding, and welcome to this yard which is licensed under the Riding Establishments Licensing Act. Yards and stables are exciting places to be, but there are some very important rules to follow and things to watch out for to make sure you remain safe and fully enjoy your horse riding experience. This video will show you what you need to do to get ready for your first riding lesson and explain some essential do's and don'ts when around horses. Following this briefing, you'll be asked to complete a rider registration and declaration form, which may look something like this. We'll use this information to assess how we manage your riding experience today and when you come back to the yard again in the future. It asks for your name and contact information, your date of birth and some more personal information like your weight and height. And we ask you about your previous riding experience. All of this information is used to make sure you are matched with the right horse or pony for your size and ability. We also ask for information regarding your doctor, next of kin and emergency contact details. And we ask that you read and sign the declaration on the form confirming your acceptance. It's important that this form is completed correctly and truthfully. For those of you who are under 18, a responsible adult must complete the form and sign the declaration on your behalf before you begin riding. Horse riding, like many outdoor pursuits, can be dangerous. As a licensed riding school, we take every reasonable precaution to ensure that accidents and injuries are kept to a minimum. Riding may not be suitable for people with some medical conditions, for those who are on medication or for ladies who are pregnant. It's also not suitable for people who are under the influence of alcohol or drugs. If you're not sure whether any of these affect you, please discuss it with your instructor. Horses have been ridden for transportation and pleasure for over 4,000 years. Whether you just want to ride for leisure or plan to enter competitions, the skill of horse riding will be one that you'll treasure and we look forward to helping you on your way. The appropriate selection of rider footwear is just as important as a good riding hat. You may be given a long tall riding boot or a short ankle boot. Whatever type of footwear you have your riding experience in, it's really important that it has a smooth, firm sole, a good solid heel that's at least half an inch deep and a solid structure through the centre of the foot. When you go to get on your horse or pony, you'll find on the saddle this metal structure that your foot is going to fit into. That's called the stirrup. It's attached to the saddle by this strap referred to as a stirrup leather. It's important to make sure that the stirrup that you're going to be using is the right size for your footwear. A boot such as this one is too wide. Your foot will go into the stirrup at the widest part of the cross section of your foot and here you can see there's no gap either side and there's a danger that the foot could get stuck in the stirrup. This shoe with this stirrup is much too big and it would move adversely in the stirrup itself. This boot is just right because at the widest part of the foot there is a thumbs measurement either side between the outer edge of the boot and the inside edge of the stirrup. That's what you want to be looking for when you put your foot in the stirrup. We're going to look now at riding hats. Your riding establishment will make sure that they're up to the appropriate safety standards and you may have one of three types of hat to wear. There's either a velvet type riding hat, a jockey skull cap or a riding helmet. Whichever type of riding hat you do end up wearing, there are a few things that you need to remember before you put it on your head. Firstly, whatever grips or slides you might be wearing, if you're a lady, make sure that they're removed. You don't want anything sharp or uncomfortable or potentially dangerous between your head and the helmet itself. When you do have the hat to put on, make sure you place it on your head so you position it from the front of your head, rolling round to the back. 
not from the back to the front. That way it will never sit correctly. If you normally wear glasses and you need to wear them for your riding lesson, then make sure that you're wearing them when the garment is fitted to your head. When we're selecting the riding hat for the rider, the first thing to do is to gauge what size is going to be appropriate to use. We can do this by measuring the rider's head around the widest part, allowing a finger's space at the temples so that it's comfortable when put on the head. Whilst this will give us an idea as to the size of garment, it won't guarantee the actual shape because of course the circumference isn't a guarantee of the actual shape of the rider's head. Okay. When you're having the riding hat placed on your head, make sure that you put it on from the front, rolling it to the back. It wants to be a good firm fit, but not uncomfortably tight. To ascertain this, gently move it front to back and side to side to make sure it's firm on the rider's head. It wants to be sitting clear of your eyebrows and level on your forehead, which is important. Feel around the hat and make sure that it's close to your head all the way around, but with a little bit of a gap at the temple. The hat isn't appropriately fitted if you haven't done up the tension harness firmly. That's really important. So do up the jaw strap first, making sure that it's finger tight only once it's been done up. And the back wants to fit closely to the rider's head. So make sure that you have assistance in securing that that is done properly. You may well now be provided with a body protector, often incorrectly referred to as a back protector. These won't stop you getting hurt if you should have the mishap of falling off, but they will give you a lot more protection than if you were not wearing one. There are two main types of these garments. Firstly, a tabard structure such as this one, or a vest fronted one with a zip. The important point to remember with the zip fronted one is that when you place it on, prior to doing the zip up, Put a thumb either side under your arm and bring the garment together before you try and close the zip structure. When you're wearing your body protector, try and fit it as close to your frame as possible over loose, thin clothing. If it's a cold day and you want a pullover or a coat, place it on top. When selecting a body protector, place it on and to make sure that it's appropriate for use, look to see that all the red indication markers are covered up. The manufacturers and the standard have these to ensure that you get adequate protection of the garment as it's designed. You can see that all of the red markers have been covered, any additional strappings have been fastened, that it's not too high at the throat and that in line with her ribs it covers well the bottom of her rib, that at the side it's well fastened and importantly at the back, when you're looking at the top, make sure it doesn't go above the prominent bone at the back of your neck. We're looking here to make sure that the body protector is not too long in the length. The rider needs to have at least a hand's adult span between the bottom of the body protector and the base of the saddle. This is an example of a body protector which is much too long in the length. Whilst you might first think this will give additional protection, it really is a hindrance because it can cause instability in the saddle by knocking on the back of the saddle. Also, if you go forward into a jumping position, as Marie is showing us here, with your head up, the back of the garment can make contact with the riding hat and with some deep shaped riding hats actually cause the hat to come forward on the rider's nose. Always look for a good hands width clearance between the bottom of the body protector and the seat of the saddle. The instructors will assess you and pair you with your riding partner, your horse or pony, for your lesson. Your horse or pony will be fully equipped with all of the tack you'll need for your first lesson. Before you start riding, here's a quick introduction to the tack you'll see on your horse or pony. The bridle is the leather straps which go around the horse's head and allow the rider to control the horse. The reins come from the bridle and the bridle can be adjusted to pick the head up and lower the head, depending on the individual horse and how much control the rider wants to have. All the other pieces of tack around the horse's head are connected to the bridle in some way. 
The bit is the metal piece of tack which goes into the horse's mouth. The bit can be used to direct the horse through pressure, but never pain. There are many different types of bit, and they work in different ways. The bit shouldn't rest on the animal's teeth, but on its gums. The phrase, getting the bit between his teeth, actually refers to when a horse tenses its mouth to grab the bit tighter with its teeth, reducing the control of the rider. The saddle is one of the biggest pieces of tack, and a good saddle is vital. Made of leather, they're not cheap, but it's not worth scrimping on a saddle. Your comfort, your safety, and that of your horse is dependent on having a good saddle. The reins are the means by which the rider has control of the horse. It's absolutely vital that any new rider learns how to hold the reins correctly, otherwise the horse may get confused. By pulling on the reins in different ways, the rider should be able to control all aspects of the horse's movement, including how fast it goes, what style of gait it uses, and whether it goes left, right or straight ahead. When combined with other actions, such as using the stirrup, a rider should have complete control of their horse or pony. The stirrups are the metal hoops in which the rider puts their feet. They're used to mount the horse and as one of the ways to control your horse or pony when riding. They're also essential for the balance and control of the rider's own body. The length of the stirrups can be adjusted to suit the individual rider. Here's some important tips to help you and your horse get on. Don't stand behind your horse. Horses can kick, so it's best to stay clear in the unlikely event that a horse kicks out. Don't feed any of the animals in the yard unless you have permission from your instructor. Keep loud and unexpected noise to a minimum around the horses to prevent spooking them. Remember to stay in the public areas of the yard unless accompanied by an instructor. The yard is a place where people are working and using machinery and equipment. As a licensed riding establishment, there's a first aider on site at all times if you find yourself needing one. Please sanitise your hands before eating or drinking and only eat or drink in allocated areas. Always remember to close gates behind you. Please ask an instructor or member of staff for advice on anything regarding the yard. All of the yard staff are here to help you have an amazing, safe and rewarding experience. You've now been introduced to the yard, your horse and your equipment. Let's go riding! Mm -hmm.